Welcome back to RC Model Reviews and here's a project that's long overdue because I've been promising this one for a while. So let's get started on the first part of the diversity controller for FPV, diversity receiver for FPV. What I've got here is a block diagram, a sort of a circuit diagram of what we're going to be building. And so I can explain how this whole thing works and what the various bits and pieces do. And obviously here we've got some receivers. I've got two receivers, better write RX in there so you know what they are. These are receivers. Now these can be 2.4, 5.8, 900, 1.2, whatever. We're going to be using 5.8 gig receivers because the little modules that uh, these receivers use are so cheap and readily available. So that's what we're going to start with. Now these receivers obviously have antennas and on the diversity controller what I've done with mine is I've got one receiver with a built-in cloverleaf. The other one has a reverse polarized SMA connector on it so I can connect up a a helical, helical antenna, a patch, whatever I want to use on there. Now you can have in this design up to four of these receivers if you want to use video only. If you don't want to bother with the sound, if you don't need to have diversity on your audio, then you can have four receivers and they'll all be switched through the diversity controller that will choose which one has the strongest signal, automatically use that one. The others, or they'll just sit there idling, spinning their wheels. So there we go. Out from the receiver we have two signals come out. One is the video, of course, which goes over here. In both receivers, the video goes into this little device here, which is a switch. It's an electronic switch, not a relay. I see some people have actually built diversity controllers with relays and hey, it works, but the switching time is rather low and you can get an interruption that causes um, flickering on your screen. Uh, so it's not the best idea, but it is simple. We're going to use an electronic switch that switches in just a few very short microseconds, so you don't even notice the fact that it's switched. That's quite important. Uh, the other signal out, of course, is RSSI, which stands for Received Signal Strength Indicator. What's that? Well, it just means that the stronger the signal, the more a voltage changes. Some, on some receivers, the stronger the signal, then the lower the voltage. On other receivers, the stronger the signal, the higher the voltage. And this is one of the things that the diversity controller has to take into account. Now, if you're just going to build it with the same receivers, just the little 5.8 gigahertz receivers, then there'd be no problem. But I know that people out there are going to want to use this with their 1.2 gig, 900 megahertz, other receivers that may have different polarity of RSSI signals. So this controller is smart enough to work out whether a high voltage or a low voltage means maximum signal. And that's part of the setup. We'll go through that in another video coming up. But here we go, we've got the RSSI that goes off to this. Now this is, I've labeled it PIC, it's actually a microcontroller. I've used a PIC because they're cheap, they're plentiful. You can even get free ones. You don't even have to pay for them if you contact micro, what is it, uh, with microchip and ask for a sample. Amazing. But I mean they're cheap anyway, they're just a couple of bucks, not expensive. And what I've done is I've ordered a whole lot, well actually I've already arrived, I've got a bundle of PICs that I'm going to program up with the code because they're out, they are a computer, they're a little microcontroller, a little microcomputer in a chip. I've programmed them all up and uh, so when you want them I'll just send them off to you in an envelope cheap as beans. I'm just going to basically what I paid for them plus the postage. That's all it is. I'm not, gonna, not making a profit out of these. It's just so that I know a lot of people won't have the necessary programmers to program the PIC chips. So I just send them to you already programmed. Simple as that. Uh, and then what the PIC does is it listens to the RSSI. It watches the RSSI voltages and it chooses whichever one indicates the strongest signal. So if this receiver has the strongest signal it's RSSI voltage will go into the PIC, the PIC will be looking at these two and go, oh, oh, this is the receiver that's got the best signal and it will then use this control, switch control here, a signal that comes out of the PIC into the switch to switch between whichever is the strongest. So in effect this is just like a little relay as I said, it's got a little thing that can go to there or it can go to there depending on which receiver has the strongest signal. It's really elementary stuff, quite basic. Um, there's not a lot of components, it's really easy to set up and it works amazingly well and it's cheap. So once the, once the PIC has decided which receiver should be used, it switches the relevant receiver through and here we have a couple of amplifiers, well, they're, they're buffers and the reason we have those is you might want more than one video out. You might have, uh, for example, you might put your DVR on here, you might put your video glasses on there, you might actually want another one and put an LCD screen on there. And if you keep just plugging everything in with a little Y lead, then what happens is the signal degrades and you lose the quality, you end up with all sorts of um, borders on some of the images, and sometimes it'll just damn stop. I've seen them where you plug too much stuff in, it just goes blank. And you see, you get nothing. So we need to have 
buffered outputs because if you plug in a faulty device you don't want say your, your DVR packs up and it might just effectively soak up all the video output signal so your glasses stop working oh what are you going to do so this basically ensures that nothing that happens on that output will affect this one and vice versa and provides a little bit extra uh, power to the signal it just the voltage stays the same it's just basically buffered so you can actually draw more uh, signal out of it there you go that's basically there's not a lot to it as i said i mentioned also about sound though because these switches what we've actually got um, is the ability to say well here we go here's another switch and of course there is another output from these receivers and that's the audio and so if the audio comes down here whoop, into there and the audio from this one oh it's all convoluted excuse my drawings goes into there then we can also take the audio out and it will automatically switch between the relevant audio now some people use telemetry on the audio so they want that you know, if you've got a, a tracker or something like that, you may want um, to have the audio switched as well. I don't use audio in FPV. Maybe I should. I don't know. I've tried it. It's actually quite nice to be able to hear the model and hear any sounds because if something goes wrong, you can tell if your motor stops or something you know, breaks. You can tell often by the sound before you can tell through your video. So the way this is set up, it has switch that will switch four things. So it can switch two video and two audio, or it can switch four video. So it's up to you how you set that up. That's something you can set up when you build it, decide at the build time. And as I say, the pick there does all the hard work, that's the computer. So it, once you've set it up and tell the pick what you've set up, it'll automatically switch stuff for you. Brilliant. So that's how the diversity controller or the diversity receiver works, because you can just use it as a controller. I've got these receivers here, but they're not actually part of the board. They're separate boards, which we'll make up separately, but you can just plug in your existing receivers. A little mod required for some of those receivers to get the RSSI signal out. You have to solder a little wire on, run it out. But that's a pretty trivial thing. I'll show you how to do that with most of the common FPV receivers. So you can, you know, basically use your diversity controller. There we go. That's the basics. That's the theory. Next video, we'll start looking at how we put it together and solder it up, program it, and then there'll be some examples of how we use it. Simple as that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a part one, I know, and the part two will be coming for you not. <laughs> I'm going to be going, I've already got the gear out here now to show you how you can print up your own boards if you want to. But again, uh, I will be making boards available. That's last time I did that, the company that makes the boards just completely screwed it up and I never actually got anything. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own boards to start with. So if you really wanna get into this, you can do it straight away. It's a simple board, it's easy to put together. But I will be working with another company to get some boards made up, basically just the bare boards you can solder up yourself. Or if you need to, I'm sure, you know, I can solder a few boards up for those people who want them but don't have the skills or the gear to solder them up. So there you go, questions, comments on the bottom of the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up so other people can find it, stay tuned. Diversity is going to be the name of the game. There's a lot of FPV stuff coming up. It's summer here. Brilliant. The weather has been pretty crap, but it's about to clear up apparently early in the new year. So we'll get into this FPV stuff as soon as I can find somewhere to fly. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.